Hey, welcome to my channel! And what would you do if I just came over to you, I grabbed your neck, and I would go like... A new The Legend of Zelda game has just been announced, and you can play as Zelda, and there's multiplicative gameplay from, from Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and ah! Well, most likely you would just call the police, and rightfully so, but my excitement level for this game is just too high. Well, actually, I'm actually am, am making this video because I want to discuss some interesting level design topics, I want to talk about the future of the Zelda franchise as a whole, and yet my excitement level is so high that I barely managed to, like, keep myself at a low level where I can actually rationally talk about what I've seen. So, let me just... <sighs> Calm down a second and bear with me, trust me, this is going to be interesting. This is actually going to be an interesting dive into what this game is and why I believe this is an important Zelda for the franchise, for, for its future. So, when the trailer first started, I first saw Link wearing a cape, and I was like, ooh, 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 what is this? And then I see Link fighting Ganondorf, uh, I mean Ganon, and I'm like, wait, wait, I was like, this is not Link to the Past, this can be Link to the Past. Link doesn't have a cape in Link to the Past, it's, it's, it's gotta be a new ge new Zelda game. But why should they ever show us the final boss fight? What is going on? This is not a normal Zelda trailer, this is not an Oracle remake, what is this? This is Link's Awakening art style, and then Link dies, and I'm like, huh? And then Zelda starts moving, and I'm like, And then the establishing shot where we can see the landscape and the logo, The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. And I immediately understood the reason why it is called Echoes of Wisdom is because it is spelled like The Legend of Zelda, so Tlodz, and Echoes of Wisdom is spelled like Ow, which is my reaction. I was like, Ow, Ow, Ow. That's why it's called Echoes of Window Wisdom, because you see Zelda and you go like, oh my god, you can play as Zelda. But that's not even the main point. The main point as to why this game blew me away was everything that came after. That being multiplicative gameplay. Now, what is multiplicative gameplay? As Hidemaru Fujibayashi explained in the Game Developers Conference while they were developing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, it is basically a way to allow players to solve puzzles their own way. In The Legend of Zelda games, puzzles have always worked like this. You see a puzzle, you need to find a specific solution, and once you find it, you can get past that obstacle. That has been basically the foundation of almost every Zelda till now, almost every puzzle in Zelda till now. But with Breath of the Wild, they wanted to achieve a system that allowed each player to find their own solution to puzzles. And how did they achieve it? By creating a system that has different elements that all interact and influence each other simultaneously. And how does it work? Well, in Breath of the Wild, it's basically physics. So it's gravity, ice, fire, electricity, for example. Metal conducts electricity. Swords are made of metal, so you can use swords to conduct electricity. If you throw a sword into a lake and then the sword gets hit by lightning, the whole lake gets electrified and it kills all the fishes in there and you can fish all the fishies. That's multiplicative gameplay, a system that allows players to find their own solutions to puzzles. And I believe they are taking the same approach with The Legend of Zelda Echoes of the Wisdom. And at first I was like, wow, no way! They're actually transporting that kind of like creative, inventive gameplay into a 2D Zelda for the first time? That's great! But then I remembered, no, wait a second, this is not the first time they actually did this, because while they were developing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, they were actually testing out all these mechanics in a 2D prototype of the first Legend of Zelda. So in a way, they already saw all of these things happening in a 2D Zelda. And now they went like, oh, hey, you know what? Hmm, we could actually make a whole game around this. It could work so well. Let's try it out. Now, Echoes of the Wisdom, though, doesn't seem to be a physics-based game. It seems like a copy-paste based game. In a way, you take an object, you store it, and then you can basically reuse it somewhere else, and each object has a property. An enemy attacks, water is something you could swim in, and so on. Um, 
So it is definitely going to be a totally different beast, but a beast that basically tickles your curiosity, always like encourages you to experiment. I think this is the kind of game that makes you go like, hmm, but what if I use this one th there? Or what if, what if I store this object? What if I show this one to that NPC? What if I use that there instead? What will happen if I were to basically put one of these but there? Hmm, it is so fun to see what you can do. With your, with your own imagination. At the end of the day, like your limit is what you can imagine, what you think is possible, and why don't you just try it out? And if that's going to be the case, oh, it's going to be so fun. But I'm wondering, will this game even have dungeons? Now, now, okay, in the trailer we saw some indoor environments, but nothing looked too traditional to me. I haven't seen any switches, I haven't seen any, like, typical chests, I don't know, I don't think this game might have dungeons, or at least not in a traditional sense. Because what was a dungeon after all, basically? A dungeon is something like this. You create a new item for Link, and that item changes the gameplay style, like a hookshot, a magnet, especially in 2D Zelda, and they basically change the way you interact with the environment. And in order that Link uses those objects to combat and to solve puzzles, Dungeons are constructed around those items, around those uh, new gameplay styles in a way. But since this is a game where I don't think you will get like upgrades or single items that allow you to do one thing, I think it is much more likely this is the kind of game where you can take any element from anywhere and bring it wherever you want. So in that case, a dungeon could not just be focused around a single mechanic, unless perhaps Zelda enters a dungeon and then basically she loses all the objects she had and she is forced to work only with the objects she finds within that dungeon then then perhaps it will make sense but I honestly believe they will take a different approach on dungeons and boss fights than you know your traditional Zelda because this is not your traditional Zelda at first I was a little bit concerned that this Zelda might actually be a little bit too much puzzle focused because they, they didn't start with combat they started with showing Zelda solving puzzles at, th at first I thought like hey maybe this game doesn't even have any combat but no there actually is combat but you don't have a weapon you use your imagination your creativity to defeat enemies and I think it's going to be fun maybe we will lose a little, a little bit of that like moment to moment 2d Zelda fun you know at the end of the day even though Zelda has like a level design a structure puzzles and, and like at the end of the day, the core essence of a game of a Zelda of a 2d Zelda is just charging a spin attack cutting some grass, bashing into some enemies, that's what you do every moment, it's so satisfying to do. So it's a little bit sad, perhaps, to lose that kind of fun, but we'll have to wait and see for that. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned it'll, it'll be a little bit more puzzle-based, but who cares? You know what? I'll take it gladly. Now, why is Zelda playable? I, I don't mean it like from a plot perspective. I mean it from like, why did they go for Zelda? Well, here's my theory. Link is an iconic character that is associated to his sword and to his shield. He is a fighter. He's a dumb boy that picks up chicken and fights and cuts grass. Zelda is not that kind of personality. So if they wanted to create a Zelda game where you're basically a magician, like spawning objects and all the time, that is not something in character with Link. I think that's why they had to go for Zelda because, you know, Wisdom, she's for me the correct character, like, like the character that fits this kind of gameplay style better. But can we call this a Zelda anymore? This is the same question I had with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom because Zelda is taking a totally new direction. But in a way, I believe it is more true to its soul. Now, bear with me. I believe that multiplicative gameplay is much more similar to what an actual adventure feels like. Now, if I were to put on a hoodie and go outside and have an adventure for, to do whatever, the world wouldn't have had a set path for me, wouldn't have had like set solution to things I might encounter. I will have to make up my own solutions for the puzzles I encounter in my life based on my knowledge, on my wisdom and on what I encounter and that will truly feel like my adventure because I myself am doing all these things. Now Zelda, till now, has always feel like a theme park to me. It doesn't feel like you're actually living an adventure. It more so feels like going to Disneyland and they're gonna like just tour you from one place to the other. Going through a dungeon feels like um, 
almost like it feels like the game tunnels you into doing one specific thing and you don't really feel like you're living an adventure it more so feels like you are observing an adventure unfold and with a little bit of suspension of disbelief it like this so blah, blah, blah. and with a little bit of suspension of disbelief you're like mm, yeah i'm living an adventure but no you don't really feel like you're having your own adventure while breath of the wild really made you feel like you are actually adventuring you are on your yourself, finding your solutions, and going all out with your own creativity. And I believe this is the core essence of what an adventure feels like, truly being in control of what you want to do and how you want to approach anything. That is great, this is a great direction for the Zelda franchise to take, in my opinion. Now, one thing that I saw in this trailer was at a certain point Zelda she was like in a sort of underground distorted area and this made me wonder are those rifts in the ground actually just obstacles otherwise it wouldn't be displayed on the map right because they're pretty obvious once you encounter them perhaps they are an entrance to a sort of different dimension or underworld and that will totally make sense it's nothing unheard of in a 2d zelda i mean the legend of zelda link to the past is all about that it's all about traveling from one world to the other just like a legend of zelda a link between worlds is like that and i think this is going to be the main focus of the zelda unless we perhaps get like a second trailer where they, where they reveal that it, that it is like that uh, like uh, like a, like a huge plot twist remember when like the trailer of the, of Mario Odyssey came out and at first we saw Mario going into crazy environments and then the second trailer revealed Cappy and the capture mechanic so perhaps we'll we could get a new trailer for the legend of zelda echoes of wisdom where we actually see how expansive the world is and there's like a whole underground uh, parallel universe kind of world perhaps i don't know could be also why doesn't this Zelda look that original? I don't know what it is. As much as I love the art style, I think it looks a little bit generic and a little bit of like auto celebrative. Like I haven't seen any new enemies, new races, new species. It looked like, oh, that's a Deku scrub from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Oh, that's a Deku tree from Ocarina of Time. And actually, no, it looks like the one from the Oracle games. Oh, that's like Hyrule Castle. Like everything. Oh, oh, a Gerudo. Everything looks so like standard Zelda. But what I have to point out is that there are actually classic Zoras, you know, from the first Zelda, A Link to the Past, and A Link Between Worlds, and modern Zoras from, you know, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and it is so great to see those two different kinds of Zoras having like a fight or something, an argument, that is so fun, that is so cool. Um, it seems to be a very like, celebrative, uh, like, like a Zelda game that like, celebrates its own franchise in a way. But I have to wait and see, I just have to wait and see. Now, is this the best direction Zelda could take for the future? I believe so, I honestly think so. Like, if Zelda were to use its traditional formula, we might still get, you know, Zelda games with even better dungeons, even more amazing hub worlds, but at the end of the day, wouldn't we get tired of it? Didn't Zelda just peak? I mean, we got so many amazing dungeons, like, I think Zelda gave us everything it could give us in terms of like dungeon design, level design. I think this truly is the next step forward. The next step toward that primal intent of just pure adventure, fun, experimentation, being on your own. I think this is what Zelda should be. I think this is an exciting and fresh future for Zelda. Do you guys agree with me? What are your thoughts on The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom? Did you like the art style? Because I know that is a very, like, uh, divisive kind of art style. Are you interested in such kind of gameplay and what was your reaction? Just let me know down there, there in the comments and since I am a super duper small YouTube channel, I can actually read every single comment and I'll try to reply to your comments as well. So thank you so much for just listening me ramble about this game for 15 minutes or something. And I'm giving you a big, big, big hug and see you next time. Bye bye, bye bye.